Thanks so much for staying with us here on the Sports Max Zone. Jamaica's senior reggae girls suffered a rare defeat on home soil, losing 2-1 to Paraguay at the National Stadium in Kingston on Sunday. Our reporter Brian Pitter was at the game. The girls went into their second and final international friendly against Paraguay on Sunday night with a mental advantage, having defeated the South Americans 1-0 at the Catherine Hall Sports Complex in Montego Bay last Thursday. However, the girls were stunned in the opening stages of the game, conceding in the 16th minute after defender Malika Days sold goalkeeper Rebecca Spencer short, forcing the Tottenham Hotspur shotstopper to make a last-ditch tackle at the edge of her box. Striker Celsa Sandoval managed to retrieve the ball and calmly slotted past a helpless Jamaica defence to make it 1-0. The Paraguayans then made it 2 to the shock of the National Stadium when midfielder Ramona Martinez tucked home across from the right-hand side in the 34th minute sending the reggae girls into the halftime break with a two-goal deficit. The Jamaicans would then enter the second half, the much more dominant team, with their efforts finally paying off in the 61st minute when the referee blew for a handball by a Paraguayan defender in the penalty area, which resulted in captain Khadija Shah dispatching the subsequent spot kick. Despite creating a host of other chances, the reggae girls were unable to find an equalizer, losing for the first time on home soil in 49 matches. Head coach Lauren Donaldson said the girls gave everything despite the defeat. I'm not disappointed. I mean, that, that's, uh, you want to win, but you got to be realistic at, at times with this stuff. You know, you're building towards something, and you know, some, some, some is gonna. I'm not disappointed at all. Just to answer your question. No, you know, we had the effort. They push hard. We didn't score. We didn't win. I have no disappointment in these girls. The energy wasn't there, and you know, we need to, as a group, find ways to you know, pick it up in down moments. And I think we struggled a lot today in those moments. And I think that's where we need to, one of the areas where I think we need to improve. You know, even though we're down, we need to have that grit and that fighting spirit to say, okay, it's there, we can go and get it. So I think that was the most, you know, important thing that I, I took from the game. The Rega girls will be hoping to secure more international friendlies before they kickstart their World Cup campaign against France on the 23rd of July next year with two more FIFA dates confirmed for February and June. Well, in the press conference after the game, Captain Khadija Bonichon, who scored her 55th international goal, called for fans and the local media to show more support for the World Cup bound team. You know, we qualified for the World Cup and there's really anything. You know, this is back to back, this is history. And nothing is, nothing is going on, there's no communication. We don't feel like you know, we've, we've, we've done this, you know, within a group we've spoken, but at the end of the day, it comes down to a lot of the little stuff that can make a big difference. It all comes down to some of the little stuff that will make a big difference. We have Khadija Bonishaw, a very prominent figure in football, women's football, speaking out, George. Uh, when I first heard about her comments, I was saying them. But they just got a bus. What, what could she say? But I, I think what she was really saying is from the perspective of the Federation. And, and perhaps how the Federation has marked or not marked the historic qualification. Because, I mean, in, in the public space, I think that the Federation can help the girls to bring more spotlight on themselves and to women's football. Before coming on to the show earlier today, I just did a, a, a basic search. I mean, there are levels of search. I just did a basic search. How many interviews Khadija Bonishaw has given the local media since the start of the year? And I found one interview in February this year, published by the Jamaica Gleaner, where comments by her were printed in the story. But those comments were not in an interview she gave directly to the Gleaner, but they were from an Instagram Live session that she had. But at least in that way, she's making herself available. Fine. But all the other interviews are from comments that she would have made post-game after doing the business for Man City in the, in the, in the English Women's League. So I'm saying, here we have the, 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 the leader of the reggae girls, our best player, best ever women's footballer, um, our leading all-time scorer, man or woman. Mm. And some people would criticize her for not making herself available for interviews. I'm not going that route because I'm saying, all right, this is where my federation steps in now and says, okay, Khadija, we wanted to sit down with, we wanted to go on the zone 
and talk about the, 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 the sports max thing. We send a link, do the Zoom and organize. I know that we here, since the start of the year, have tried to reach her. We went to three, four, five people and couldn't reach her. So I'm just saying that perhaps what she's expressing frustration with is her own federation not coordinating things around the achievement of the second World Cup qualification to say that, folks, here are your reggae girls, they are World Cup bound, and try to get that link between them and the public so the girls can feel that what they did achieve was actually significant. I think that's what she's complaining about, and I want the Federation to step forward, and there's still a lot of time to do yeah. more between now and next year to get that buzz going. Yeah. She spoke about communication, Lance. Um, do you get the sense that there seems to be a lack of communication between, as he said, the Federation and the players? Well, it's hard for me to sit here and, and say conclusively, you know, if that is so or not. Um, but if she says so, it means that she is disappointed with the level of communication. Um, I think part of the issue would probably be the turnout yesterday as well. And also, you can't hide from the fact of the girls always comparing themselves to the men. The and I think, I think what get. is hurtful for her, understandably, understandably, is that if the reggae boys were heading for a second World Cup tournament, the excitement and the flurry of the media fanfare. action and fanfare would be 10 times what we're seeing now, even 20 or 30 times. And she knows that. And I think that is what, I think that is what she finds painful because based on the measurement of their performance, it warrants a lot more commendation and a lot more embracing of the reggae girls, and she isn't feeling it. Right. So she's honestly saying that, you know, this isn't good enough. Just a quick comment before we go to the break on, you know, what we saw from the ladies um, in the Paraguay matches and, of course, their preparation. Oh, um, I mean, they're trading victories with a, a, a South American team that have a larger footprint in women's football than Jamaica. I can understand that. Um, well, I can, I can accept the two performances. I, I thought the first performance was better overall. I thought the second half on Sunday was better. But look, there's a long time between now and when they board the plane to go down under for the World Cup. And I think there's a lot, a lot, a lot to do. But one quick thing, the headline. There's a headline that has been making some problems. The Gleaner headline, I think, said, Wasteful girls lose to Paraguay. And several people have been up in arms about it. And I'm saying, well, people, come on, have we lost our brain? It's a usual headline that attends to a team that has had many chances and no failed to tuck them away. So in the communication of the headline, mm -hmm. the viewer can, without reading the article, see the headline and say, oh, wasteful girls lose to, to Paraguay. Or oh, it means the girls had several chances, yeah. didn't take them, and that's why they lost to Paraguay. Yeah. If you don't believe me, just go anybody on your computer, just Google wasteful reds and see how many articles are there talking about Liverpool, Manchester United, and other team that are, teams that are referred to as the reds. And look how many headlines it say wasteful reds. So it's nobody saying that the reggae girls are waste girls, which is how some people have interpreted it. And so many dunces on social media have interpreted it that way and are causing well-thinking people to believe that some injury has been done. No injury has been done. It's a common way to communicate something in football when a team misses a lot of chances and loses a game. The headline is written, wasteful so-and-so loses to so-and-so. It's as simple as that. Not waste so-and-so, wasteful so-and-so. Let's take a break. So, mm. and so.